Hello, welcome to the Parkinson's Foundation PD Health at Home Fitness Fridays. My name is Eric Johnson, founder of Movement Revolution and our Neuro Exercise Specialist Training Program, which is a newly accredited Parkinson's Foundation exercise education course. My name is Matt Costa, Neuro Exercise Specialist and General Manager of Movement Revolution. Today, we're going to be focusing this workout on exercises to help you walk stronger. We will be doing so from the floor, from kneeling positions, and also from a chair. Matt will be demonstrating everything from the chair for a modified version for today. As far as equipment goes, we need a mat if you're getting down to the ground to help protect your knees. You're going to need a chair to hold on to if you need to hold on to something for some stability. Um, and then I have a phone over here that we're going to be using later in the workout. You can use any object that you have nearby, whether it's a shoe, a book, a cup of coffee, don't spill it. Okay, make sure it's empty. Um, but according to the newly released uh, exercise recommendations from the Parkinson's Foundation, aerobic exercise like walking, like we're doing today, um, needs to be incorporated three times a week for at least 30 minutes. Uh, if you would like more information on these recommendations, you can download your free copy uh, for these guidelines at parkinson.org backslash exercise. So let's get to the workout, right? Matt's going to be seated in the chair. I'm going to slowly make my way down to the ground. We're going to be starting on your back, right? So get down onto the knees. I'm going to be lying down on my back. We're going to be starting with the bridge exercise. Everything that we do today is going to be focused on the mechanics and helping you be more mobile and strong with initiating steps. So this is a great workout to do before you go for a walk or on the days when you're not going for a walk to help your mechanics with walking. So that's what we're going to be working on today. All of these exercises are going to help stabilize your hips, make you more aware of how we need to walk, right? So let's lie down on your back. You need a pillow for your head. Go ahead and grab that. We're going to start with your feet tucked underneath your knees, all right? And your hands just relax down to your side, feet flat on the ground. Relax your head back. We're going to go into a bridge. Let's just do three bridges. On that bridge, tense up your belly button, and okay? Lift your hips. Slow and steady, squeeze your bum as you go up there. That's a modification Matt is doing here is just to sit the stand. So go slowly back down. And as we go back up into that bridge or into that stand, press through your heels, a little pause at the top, squeeze your bum, and then slowly come back down. Let's do that one more time. Drive the hips up. Get that posture tall if you're standing. Squeeze your bum on the ground. And slowly come back down. Now, every step needs to start with good weight bearing on one leg, right? We have to kind of shift our weight. So this exercise is going to be a bridge. You're going to lift up into that bridge. Lift up with you for a little bit of practice. Lift up. And then you're going to shift your weight over to the right leg. And then you're going to raise your left knee to your chest. And then you're going to bring the left leg down. Shift your weight into the left leg. Raise the right knee to your chest. Bring that right leg back down. And then bring your hips back down before we sit. And that's a bridge with a march. It's weight shifting into a knee flexion, the same thing we have to do when we go to initiate a step. Let's do five of these all together. So, step tall, on the ground, get some pressure through your heels, relax your arms, lift your hips up into a bridge. Shift into your left leg. Raise your right knee to the chest. Bring the right leg back down. Slow. I try to keep my cadence. Keep your hips up. Shift to the right. Raise that left knee up. A little pause. And come back down. Let's reset the hips all the way back down. Okay, so as we go up, maintain a regular breathing pattern. Exhale as we lift those hips up. Shift to the left. Raise that right knee up. Right leg down, dip to the right, left leg up, and back down, and drop your hips back down to the mat. Okay? If you can't hold it that long, try to hold it as long as best you can. You can speed through this a little bit faster. The slower you go, the more stability and strength you're building right through the bridge. Let's lift up, exhale, dip to the left, lift the right knee. Good, right leg back down, shift to the right, lift the left knee, 
and back down. Hips reset. All right. Nice job. Let's go two more times. Hips up. Exhale. Hip to the left. Right knee up. And down. Shift to the right. Left knee up. And back down. Good. You should be feeling this in your glutes. Maybe a little opening up in the front side of your hips. Last one here. Hips up. Exhale. Shift to the right. Left knee up. Right leg down. Shift to the right. Left leg up. And down. And reset your hips down to the ground. All right? Shot. So we're going to kind of progress from there. We're going to be going into um, a knee tuck. So we're looking at now the phase of the step where you uh, lift that knee up and then extend the leg out. All right. So we're going to be still on your back. The legs are going to be straight. Right. So legs straight, arms at your side. Okay. Let's lift that right knee to your chest. And after you lift that right knee to your chest, I want you to extend that right leg straight up toward the ceiling. You got tight hamstrings like me, that leg, leg might not get all the way straight. And that's okay. Just try to kick that leg up as high as you can. It's like kicking your, your foot out for a big step. And it's something we commonly practice. You're going to bend that uh, foot back down, bend the knee, and straighten that leg back out. We're going to do the same thing going over to the left side. Left knee up. Kick straight up. Okay. And then bring it back down. You might notice one side is tighter than the other. Okay, those are really important things to pay attention to. We're going to want to probably do a few more repetitions on the side a little bit tighter if you're doing this at home on your own. But let's go through five repetitions uh, on each side for a total of 10. And we'll count them out together. We're going to start with that right leg first. You're going to raise that right knee to your chest. Kick up. Exhale to kick. Back down. That's one. Left knee up and kick. Back down, two, right knee up, and kick up. Back down, that's three. Left knee up, kick up, left leg down, that's four. Right knee up, kick, down, five. Left knee up, kick, down, six. Right knee up, kick. Down, seven, left leg up, kick, down, eight, last two, right knee up, kick, down, nine, left leg up, kick, down, that's ten. So what we're, sorry, what we're doing there is we're really actively lengthening your hamstrings. In order to take a bigger step, you got to get more extension through your hamstring and through your leg to make that stride length a little bit bigger. So we've activated your glutes, we've mobilized our hamstrings. Now let's do something to work on opening up the front side of your hips. That's gonna progress into our next exercise. So we're gonna transition onto your stomach, okay? So roll onto your stomach, have your elbows right underneath um, your shoulders, okay? Now from here, we're just gonna do a hamstring curl. So you might feel already a bit of a stretch um, in the front of your abdomen. If you're feeling anything in that lower back, you can kind of lower yourself down to the mat. We don't want an excessive discomfort in your lower back, right? So you can either prop yourself up, that's gonna give you a little more of a stretch, or you can relax back down. But from here, what I want you to do is alternating hamstring curls. You're gonna pick one leg up and back down. You're curling that heel in towards your hips, okay? You might get a little cramp in the back of that hamstring. Hopefully, you don't have that last exercise we did. That's what we did first. As you can see, Matt over here is curling that heel under the chair. So we're picking that heel up, curling it up toward your butt, your bum, and back down. So let's pay attention to what you're feeling as we do this. And as I talk, what, what I want you to be feeling, keep going with these repetitions, just alternating curls up toward your hips. Okay? This is a great mobilizer for the front side of your hips, stretching out your quads, your quadriceps, and the front side of your legs. A lot of times they're tight. Right? If we have some postural instability, we feel it kind of crouched over. Those hip flexors and quads get really, really tight, which impedes our ability to take a, a bigger step. So we're curling up, back down, one more time on the other leg, and back down. Now that everyone kind of come down, flatter on the ground, we're going to do both legs at the same time. 
right? So get yourself nice and flat. This is gonna put a little extra stress in the lower back if you're really lifted through your chest. So get down nice and flat through your chest, both legs together. We're gonna be curling your heels in towards your hips. Now hold that position. You're gonna feel a good pull on the back of the hamstring. Maybe some, uh, if you squeeze your, your hips from there, squeeze your bum while those legs are up, you're gonna feel more of a stretch in the front side of your hips. Let's do five of these all together. Down, we're gonna curl up and hold. That's one, and down. Curl up and hold. Then two and down. Exhale as we curl up and down. That's three. Curl up, down. That's four. One more time. Curl up and down. That's five. Very nice. Now let's work our way up to a kneeling position from here. As I mentioned, we're going to be working from the ground up. It's a great way to help you mobilize and stabilize through your hips, make you confident, initiate these steps um, a little bit stronger. So from this kneeling position, you want yourself about um, hip width apart with your knees. All right, and we're going to be starting with a rock or a side to side shift, very similar to that kneeling bridge that we did before, that march, right? So from here, we want to be tall for your hips like you're bridging. Okay, squeeze your bum. Get that posture up tall, try to find something to look at kind of out on the horizon and out in front of you. And we're just gonna rock from one side to the other. So I'm gonna shift all of my weight over to my right leg. Okay? And I'm gonna shift all of my weight, pause in the center, and now shift my weight over to the left side. As you can see, one of my knees is coming up, it doesn't have to, right? If you just wanna shift here, shift all your weight over to that left side. We just want good weight bearing on one leg, Reaching that arm out to keep your posture tall. Let's come back to the center. Now let's do five on each side. We're gonna go slow, go steady. We want stability. We wanna pause, make sure you have your stability in between each repetition with tall posture through your hips. We're gonna start by going to the right. We're gonna to rock to the right. Shift your weight to the right. Reach that arm out as far as you can, lifting that posture up. Back down, that's one. Go to the left, reach and shift. Good, there's two, back down. Reach to the right, shift to the right. All of your weight is in that right leg. And back down, that's three. Shift to the left, posture's nice and tall. Back down, that's four. Reach to the right, shift, look down, come back down, that's five. Reach to the left. Posture really tall. Feel that strength in your hip on that left side. And back down, six. Right shift and reach. And back down, seven. Get to the left. Get that posture up, nice and tall. That's eight. Let's reset the hips here, getting nice and tall before we go to the right for our last two. Right. Reach to the right, really, really tall. Back down, good, that's nine. And reach up to the left, back down, that's 10. Very good, very good. Okay, so that's a huge hip activator, right? So we're really working on that weight shift through our step. The next exercise is, is going to be a um, from your hands and knees in a, what we call quadruped position. So we want the um, arms right underneath your shoulders, Right, and the knees right underneath your hips. From here, this is again a kind of a mobilizing exercise. We already got our hamstrings loosened up, our hips opened up, and now we want to open up our calf. That's the first thing to hit the ground as we step. So this is a great way to stretch it while sitting um, in a chair or while um, on the ground. If you're sitting in a chair, you can kind of go up against a wall or maybe the back side of the chair and then step back into um, a reverse step to get your hand or your calf stretched out. So if we're on the ground, we're going to extend one leg straight back. We're going to plant that toe onto the floor, fully extending that leg, straightening out the knee, and pressing your heel down toward the ground. You feel a really intense stretch on the backside of your left leg. Okay? Now from there, we're going to work on pushing off that leg and tucking that knee back up to your elbows. So it's going to be from that extended position, you're going to pull that left leg Exhale, pull it back up to the hands, set it down. 
Okay, we're gonna have to extend the right leg straight back. Okay, right leg straight back, plant that toe into the ground, push that heel down, the knee is straight. You're strong through the arms. Okay, if you need a modification, if this is too hard in your arms, you can always do what Matt's doing. Okay, we're gonna pull that right knee as you exhale into the chest. So we got a little bit of a stretch, a little bit of core activation. Really, really important as we go to initiate a step to have good, strong core and abdominal muscles to help you lift that leg up. Okay, so we're gonna do 10 of these total. Okay. We're gonna go left side first. We're gonna extend that left leg all the way back. Press that heel down. Now tuck that knee to the chest. Exhale. That's one. Right leg back. Push that heel back. Tuck in. That's two. Left leg back. Press the heel down. Tuck in. Three. Right leg back. Press that heel down. Tuck in. Four, left leg back. Press that heel, maybe you're getting a little more range of motion. Tuck in. Five, right leg back. Tuck in. Six, left leg back. Press that heel back, plant the toe. Tuck in. Seven, right leg back. Press that heel back, tuck in. Eight, left leg back. And in, nine, last one, kick that right leg back, tuck in, and 10. Walk those hands back, stand up nice and tall on your knees. Very, very nice job, okay? So, how are we feeling? We good? Uh, so, let's sit, sit up nice and tall on our knees. This is our last one from the knee on the position. If this is getting difficult on your knees, you can always put an extra pillow or double up your mat on the knees. This last one, we're going from a kneeling position into a half knee. So this one's a little bit more challenging. If you need a chair by your side, you can have it there. Um, but if you feel confident, let me show you the exercise first. And you can feel, it, feel the need to grab a chair if you need to. From this position, it's going to be a rock that we just practiced, right? We're going to rock to one side. I'm shifting all of my weight to my left leg. But then I'm going to raise my right knee up. Okay, so you're gonna raise that right knee up out in front of you. This is a challenging balance exercise. So if you feel like that was a little unsteady, grab a chair and put it right at your side or right out in front of you. All right, we don't wanna challenge the balance a ton with this. We really wanna focus on that weight shift side to side. It will help us as we go to stand up, okay? We're gonna shift back into that right, uh, I'm sorry, your left leg to pull that right leg back down. Let's do the same thing to the other side. You're gonna shift to the right, reach to that right side, or put your hand on a chair, and then raise that left knee up. As you can see, as I'm kind of coming up here, that foot wants to be out in front of you, and the foot wants to be flat on the ground. A lot of times, if your hips are tight, you're gonna kind of be on your toes, right? It's gonna be hard, you're gonna have to take a couple steps to get there. That's okay, but try to make a really big, really dynamic lift, plant that foot down, get your posture tall, and then bring it back down, okay? Let's get nice and tall on our hips. Let's go a total of six here. We're gonna progress to some standing exercises next, okay? Tall through our hips. We're gonna to shift to our left. Okay, reach with the left, posture tall, right knee, drive it up. Plank that foot on the ground, get nice and tall. Shift back to the left, bring that right leg back down. It's one. We're shifting to the right, reach to the right. Left knee up. Good. Get nice and tall to your posture. That's going to help us move those legs up and down. Shift to the right. Put that left leg back down. Land it back down. Stay tall through the hips. And we're going to shift back to the left. Reach to the left. Right leg up. Go. Good. Get that posture tall. Good. Shift back to the left. Right leg back down. Okay. Just reset, nice and tall, shift to the right. Raise that arm out if you need to. If you don't need to, you don't have to. Raise that left leg up, plant it. Good, and back down. Now you may notice one side is a little bit easier than the other, right? So that's very common. Step initiation, weight shifting, and balance can be affected on one side over the other. Matt actually did a video on balance 
that is going to complement these exercises really, really well. So I invite you to go back and visit um, that video on balance. It's paired really, really well with this walking video here. So some of the single leg and single hip balance. So one more to each side. If one side is more difficult, be extra mindful of moving stronger and bigger with that side. All right, we're going to shift one more time to each side. We're start shifting to the left. Reach to the left, posture tall, lift that right leg. Good, and back down. Okay. Shift to the right, reach to the right. Left leg up, and back down. Very nice, right. Let's slowly make your way up to the, up to the standing position. If you need to carry you that chair, all right. We're gonna stand for the remainder of these exercises. Everything that we just did, it's all preparation for what we're going to do now. It's all preparation for standing. Those are good mobility, good strength exercises. You don't have the time to go through all of these, all of the ones that we just did. These next exercises are going to be good tools just to help you get your walking off on the right foot. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is stand with your feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to, these movements are going to look very, very similar. The same principles apply to what we did on the back to what we did means and now what we do is stand. Right? There is a purpose behind doing those exercises in every position. So from this position, we're going to have about a hip width stance. We don't want to be too wide because it's going to make it a lot more difficult. It's not a natural walking position. So we want to stand in a position where you would be comfortable initiating a step. You don't want your feet close together. Right? You want your feet nice and wide. We're about hip width apart. Okay, let's start with just a rock from side to side. So we're rocking to the right side. Okay, all of your weight is like 90% of my weight is in my right hip, my right leg. I'm strong from my heel to my toe on that foot. Posture is tall as I shift to the side. I'm going to come back to the center. I'm going to shift my weight now fully over to my left side. So my right leg is pretty well unloaded. Right, 90% of my weight is in that left foot, heel, toe, equally balanced. Posture is tall, okay? Come back to the center. We're gonna shift back to the right side. Shift and be tall, okay? Come back to the center. We're gonna shift back to the left side. Reach up, all nice and tall. I'm beginning a little bit of confidence now. Okay? Get to that 90% loading, if not 100% loading on that left side. Let's shift back to the right. Okay, reach that right if you need to. If you don't need to, you can keep that hand at your side. And if you can, kind of lift and kind of hover that left foot off the ground. Pull the weight there on to that right leg. Come back down. We're going to do the same thing to the left. Shift to the left. Try to load 100% of your weight in that left leg so you can lift that right leg up. Okay, again, if you need a little bit of assistance from here, while you're doing this standing exercise to get the practice, you can have a chair next to you or do this at a countertop, that works too, all right? Let's do a few more of these to each side, and we're gonna go into that little bit of a march. And okay, so let's shift to the right, posture tall, just slightly lift that left leg, okay? Come back down, plant your feet. Make sure those feet are still hip width apart, maybe shoulder width apart. If they come close together, like a lot of our, you know, a lot of times it commonly does, is this is a really inefficient place to shift your weight. Right? It's hard to initiate a step when your feet are a lot closer together. So we want that good base of support, allows us to use our hips as we go to shift the weight. Right? We're going to shift to the left, reach to the left, that posture is up nice and tall, slightly lift that right leg. Okay? Very good. Let's come back down. We're going to do this two more times. Right? We're going to go to the right, lift up tall, lift that left leg. Now, as you bring that left leg down, we're going to down to the ground. Okay, let's give us more sensory input into that left side. Helps us shift our weight quickly back over to the left to get to that weight shift. Okay, lift that right leg up. It's tall and stop it down. Okay, let's go a little bit faster as we last two. Shift to the right, lift and stop. Go to the left, shift your weight, lift and stop. Now that probably allows us to be a little more free and a, lot, a little bit more comfortable shifting your weight. So let's do 10 times just that weight shift, side to side, a little bit faster. Okay? Make sure your posture is tall, make sure those feet stay wide. Okay? We're going to the right to start with. You ready? Here we go. Let's reach. That's one, 
reach two, reach three, reach four, reach five, reach six, reach seven, reach eight, reach nine, reach ten. Good. Stop on your feet. Those feet have a lot more sensory input. You should be feeling a little better. Need a little tingly. That's all good stuff. Okay. So now, we have, how do we take that and turn it into a set? Right. A couple of things we have to do. It's not just as simple as reaching and rocking to the side. Right. We have to lift that knee. We have to kick it out and extend it. So we're going to take that same rock. Okay. We're going to keep that posture tall. You're going to lift that knee to the chest and kick. Okay. We're going to. Shift to the other side, lift that knee up and kick. We're just going to be stationary for now. Okay, let's go to the right, shift to the right, left knee up and kick. Okay, plant that foot back down, shift to the left, right, right knee up and kick down. Okay, stomp that foot if you need to, shift to the right, left knee up, kick down. Okay, shift to the left, right knee up, kick down. Do that one more time each side. Shift to the right, left knee up, kick down. Shift to the left, right knee up, kick down. Very good. Now, let's take that same exercise and turn it into one step forward. Okay? So it's just me a lunge, one step forward and back. If you're on your mat, then you kind of uh, step to the front of your mat. Okay? That way you don't, you don't have anything up in front of you. Make sure you have shoes on if we're taking a step. Where you're stepping on, somebody has a little bit of traction. Never step with socks onto a hardwood floor or tile. That's just a slippery wheel. Like that. Okay, so make sure you have good traction with whatever's out in front of you. Get that posture out nice and tall. We're gonna do the exact same thing you just did. We're gonna shift to the right. We're gonna lift that knee up. And instead of, as we kick, we're gonna step forward. All right, keeping that posture tall. Sometimes when we step forward, balance is a little compromised. We may be falling forward. Keep that chest lifted and step back. Step back to that wide base of support. Check yourself on that mat. Did you step back far enough to have enough balance to make that next step? That's what we need to pay attention to. Okay? Have that good base of support. Shift to the left. Posture tall, right knee lifts, kick. Good. Keep that posture up nice and tall and back. As you can see, that's kind of keeping that arm out there. Okay, if you need that arm out there for a little bit of balance or some uh, reinforcement for better posture, that's really going to help. Okay, let's let's do two more on each side. So we're going to shift to the right, lift that left knee, kick and and back. Shift to the left, posture's up, right knee up, kick and step and back. Make sure your feet are wide. Shift back to the right, knee up, kick, and step, and back. Okay, shift to the left, posture up, right knee up, kick, and step. Very good. And back. Get that first step done. Right. If you do all those things, then you're loaded. If we practice being slow and being big from here, we can go to stand up and take that first step. Practicing these principles, that step should be a little bit easier to, to step or to maintain, right? So now let's turn this into a few steps. We don't, we don't just take one step going anywhere, right? So we're going to practice taking two steps forward and two steps back, okay? Actually, before we do that, okay? Let's practice making a little turn because all about shifting weight, making sequential steps, symmetrical and big and consistent. It's all about maintaining a proper weight change. Just like we did before, so it's a rock from side to side. Okay, so this exercise is not only going to help you to reinforce that consistent rock, right? but we're going to work on a little bit of turning as well. So from here, I'm going to be turning to my right. I'm on my mat. Right? Our, our goal is to maintain your body on your mat. Maybe you kind of coming off the front and coming off the side, but we don't want to go too far. Okay, so I'm just going to rock. And as I rock, I'm turning to my right, so I'm going to kick my left leg out front. I'm going to kick my left and rock. Kick 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 
and rock. As you come back to keep rocking from side to side. Notice how my feet never came close together. Okay, your feet may have, that's okay. Okay, you may be just getting back to the, the finish of that turn. That's okay. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. This takes practice. That's why you're here. So we're gonna keep rocking from side to side. You should start feeling this in your hip. You get on the side of your hips right here. Make sure you keep that posture nice and tall. This time we're gonna be turning to the left. So we're gonna rock to the left, kick to the right. Rock left, kick right. Rock left, kick right. Rock left, kick right. Rock left, kick right. Left, kick right. Okay, keep going with that until you get back to that starting position. Okay, you master the turn. Right, any turn is no different than that. Right, turning a chair, turning around a corner, going anywhere, it's no different than what you just did. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing going forward. We're still rocking, those hips are getting a workout. Okay. But we're going to rock forward and kick. Okay? Uh, I almost feel like uh, Frankenstein, almost like the straight leg. But that's the emphasis I want you to make okay? as you're kind of rocking and stepping forward and back. So just find some space, maybe three feet out in front of your mat. We're going to rock and step to that position and then come back. So three feet out in front of your mat. If you want to put your cone out there, you can. Okay? I do that just right out from the mat here. All right. We're going to just rock and step to that cone. So just rock inside the side, kick, and walk to that cone. Let's not count the steps. Don't worry about how big those steps are. Just really want you to focus on that weight shift side to side. And then we're going to do the same thing going backward. If you feel like you're not confident moving backward, you can turn around and walk forward back to that starting position. Okay, but walking backward is no different than walking forward. It's long as we have a good weight shift. You do this by a counter or a wall. You can do that to be a little bit more safe. Let's do that one more time. We're going to rock forward and kick forward. Okay, all the way to that object, three feet out in front of you. Keep that rock going as we kind of kick back. Give you a little forward leaning as we go to kick back. Maintain your balance. Okay, coming right back into that weight shift. Okay. Do that one more time. Shift, come forward. Okay, and then rock and shift as we come back. Okay, let's practice one more turn and then we're going to go into some natural real steps. Okay, right? so we're going to turn to our right. Same rock from side to side. Posture is tall. Let's practice this again. I'm going to shift to my right, kick left. Shift right, kick left. Shift right, kick left. Shift right, kick left. Right, kick left. Right, kick left. Okay, always shift. That's it. Okay, let's go back to the left. Okay, now I'm going to shift to the left, kick right. Kick left, kick that right leg left. Left, kick that right leg. Left, kick the right. Left, kick the right. Nice job. Okay, give those legs a little bit of a break. <laughs> Shake them out a little bit. Now flex the knee. Get a little knee bends here if you need to. Um, we're going to take that object. Okay, this is a little trick that we do with a lot of our clients here. I find that it works really well. Step calibration. Just accepting how good your steps are. Okay. Everyone always takes, says, take a big step. Right? Make, it, make your steps bigger. We have no way to quantify that other than saying, okay, this helps you quantify it a little bit better. So I'm going to take my phone. I'm going to place it just off to the side here. I'm going to step to the back of my mat. Okay. And what I want you to do is count. How many steps it takes you to get to that cone, turn around, and return to the back of your mat? Okay. Make sure you have enough distance to walk around whatever object this is. Okay. Don't make it too far. Let's start small. You can always make this bigger. You can even place it around your house to do this exact same thing. Staying at the back of the mat, I'm going to count every single step, even the tiny turns, even the tiny turns when you come back. Okay. Every step counts. Right. Okay? So, Practice everything we just worked on. Weight shifting, strong step, right? Doesn't matter how many steps you get, just do it and get back to this position. You might count mine out loud, right? Don't listen to me. You count your steps, okay? On your mark, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You know, I'm coming to all of my steps. 
or maybe I turn all the way back to my starting position. Yeah, every step counts. Okay. Now we're gonna do it again. This time I want you to try and reduce the number of steps that you've been counting by one or two. Right, so we're reducing the total number of steps by one or two. I had 14, I'm shooting for 13 or 12 or 13. Right? So keep your posture tall, everything we can practice. Weight shift, big step, make those steps bigger. Ready? And go. One, two. If you make your way back, that's our position. Still getting there. Keep going. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time. Get the same or reduce. The goal here is to try to find the optimal number of steps, not the fewest number of steps. The optimal, optimal number of steps takes you to get from point A, round point B, and back safely, comfortably, and efficiently. That's how we make walking better. We want safety. You want good mechanics. You want to make your um, gait mechanics more efficient for you so you can walk longer and increase that endurance. Right? So, one more time, one step or more, one step or fewer. Okay, then you had less. Posh was nice and tall. Ready? And go. One, two, three, four, five. That's perfect. You can do that too. That is walk strong. Okay. I hope you found these exercises very helpful. Okay? If you want more resources like these exercises, like I mentioned, Matt did, um, and it uh, he did a exercise video for balance. We're also doing one this month on postural alignment. So posture has a lot to do with how you walk. Right? So there's another class coming up called Align. I hope you join us for that. But thank you again for joining the Parkinson's Foundation PD Health at Home Fitness Fridays. For more information on these classes or the exercise recommendations, please visit parkinson.org backslash exercise. Thank you so much. Have a great day.